Hi. Welcome to lesson seven of week one of Julia programming for nervous beginners in which we discuss how to do string interpolation. So the aim is just to explain what string interpolation is, how it works and what it's for, and to give some examples. So after this you will be able to explain uh, what string interpolation is and what it's for, and to use the dollar open close parentheses to do string interpolation. And finally, you will explain what inputs can be used for string interpolation and give some examples of such inputs. So what do we mean by string interpolation and why do we do it? It is a method for adding something to a string literal, but so why would we need a method like that? Because we can already make the string literal, can't we? And the answer is, well, uh, we, might make, uh, we might want to make a string with a table of values that we don't actually have until we do some long computation. And because it's a table, these values, um, there are many values to compute. Each, each of them takes a long time to compute, but it's only once they're done that we can put them in the table. So we separate out the process of computing from the process of making the, the strings for the table. Um, first we do the computing, then we make all the strings, then we make the table, and then we're done. Um, so that's one thing, is to, um, to make the formatted string in two steps. We make a part that doesn't require the computed value, and then we add the value that needs to be, um, that is only available later on. Um, also when we make labels, if we make lots and lots of diagrams, for instance, each will have to have their own label, and it's only when we make the diagram that we need the label, so we only make the label at the time. Sometimes these labels can depend on things like dates and times, which we can only know um, at the last minute. So that's uh, the reason for it. Um, the syntax is fairly simple. So if we have the string like zx, y, v, uh, zx, y, w, v, u, t, and we want to get the cry, help! I want to get out of the alphabet. Then we can use this as our uh, input. Okay, so let us demonstrate that. So here's the string z, x, y, w, v, u, t. Um, and instead we put in somewhere uh, backslash, uh, sorry, not backslash, dollar open and close parentheses, and in here we want to put whatever should go. So obviously it's something that can be a string. I'll just use the string itself, and we see that it is put in. Um, so of course uh, doing it like that uh, is no different from making the string literal at the time, but uh, more interesting is to have a variable, and the variable can then change. And every time we uh, make this string, the string literal, using the variable with a different variable, we'll get a different string. Okay, so let's look at tract variable equals, say, uh, Let's make it the string one. And, um, and I'll make the string the value of tract variable is a dollar. And we end the string. So it's important that this is the whole thing. So the track variable has a value 1, and we put in the value 1 there by not actually putting in the string 1 itself, but putting in track variable. If we make track variable, uh, say, 71, then it changes. So what this string interpolation does, it's basically a way of telling Julia that when this string literal is formed, when, when this string literal is actually entered into your memory on your computer, then it must go to track variable 
and it must actually find out what the value is of tract variable and replace this interpolation code with a value of tract variable. Um, there is a shorthand possible. Uh, in this case, I can just do this. So I can take out the parentheses in certain cases. So what's happening is that this is the name of a variable and the string n. So there's no ambiguity possible. When Julia sees tracked variable after dollar, it can go onto the list of names and you can see there is a variable there and um, in the namespace and can use it. It's got to uh, be a little careful that there isn't another variable or another meaning that can be used. So Julia, um, if there's any doubt whatsoever that you mean that this must be the variable and nothing else, so you follow it with, uh, with the end of the string, for instance, uh, you can also follow it with space, then um, Julia will use it. But if there's any doubt, Julia will not use it. Okay. Um, one can even put in um, an expression. So uh, let us uh, say I want um, instead of this, um, not instead, but let's say tract variable and another variable called say n, and n is um, the character n. So here I'm doing multiple assignment and then I'm putting the semicolon to say that this multiple assignment is a piece of code and I now I'm going to have new code and in here um, I will put tract variable and I will do it with n. So now we have the two variables tract variable and n and we join them and 71, and which is obviously not a particularly interesting one. So, so it's to be noted that here I have to use, um, uh, if I try and use just the number one, it doesn't work. Um, but if I want to use numbers, I can use them. So I can has to have the number 22 or 2.22, or I can even use some arithmetic such as if I um, use, uh, now I have the number one is n, so I can say n plus uh, 73. So of course, um, tracked variables value is actually 71, and here I'm saying it's 73, so you can easily lie uh, with, with um, statements like this. It's, uh, Julia doesn't, guarantee that what is expressed by the string is the truth by any means. So if we want to include the character dollar itself, we have to escape it. So we can say print lin uh, that will be, let me have slash dollar for the amount. And we say nine 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 nine. Please. And now the actual string will still have the escape character in it, but when it is formatted by um, Printlin, then you don't see the escape character. So this is the actual string, and this is what is stored in Julia's memory. Whereas when you do interpolation, Julia doesn't. Uh, store the interpolation because for that to be stored, the value of tracked variable will also have to be stored and that can be uh, quite tricky and, and, and take a lot of memory. So whenever Julia forms a string literal, it forms it like this. This is still a string literal because backslash dollar is still literally the character dollar. Right, so to review, a string literal is included by using dollar and open and close parenthesis. You can use this, uh, the input, so what you put inside the parenthesis, anything that can be f formatted as a string, um, but combining uh, characters and strings with numbers 
requires those numbers to be formatted as strings before they joined. Um, and it's particularly useful for when we want to make strings where the values uh, that we want to use to make the string are known only after the code is written. And the characters um, dollar itself is um, because it is part of interpolation. If you want to not do interpolation, you have to escape it backslash dollar. That's the end of lesson seven. And please do the exercises and go on to lesson eight.